So welcome back. Uh, so in the first part of today's lecture, we noticed that given a matrix A, we can now make another subspace associated with that, that matrix. So this will be our third subspace attached to a matrix. So once you have a matrix A, you have its null space, its column space, and now we're getting the row space of a matrix. So just like in the other two cases, we had a procedure to find both the basis and the dimension. Let's try to do the same thing for the row space of A. And I'll just kind of break it down by steps. So of course, the first step is somebody has to give you a matrix and I've already written down the matrix here. Step one is you have to put it into row echelon form. Okay, so step one, what we're going to, you do kind of week one type of material. So the row echelon form of your matrix. And in fact, uh, in, in this particular case, I've actually put it into reduced row echelon form, but it's not necessary to do all of that. So we have one, three, zero, four, two, zero. Then we have zero, zero, one, two, zero, zero, and zero, 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 and one and then a row of zeros at the bottom. Okay, so there's my matrix B. Then what you're going to do is you're going to identify uh, the rows with the leading ones. Well, that's pretty easy, right? So we'll just get the leading ones right here. So step two. Identify the rows with leading ones. So in our case, in our example, this is rows one, two, and three. So that gives us three vectors, right? So we get three different rows. We get uh, our three vectors. We get one, three, zero, four, two, zero, transpose. Then we have R2, which is going to be zero, zero, one, two, zero, zero, transpose. And then R3 is the last row, right? Zero, 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 zero. Hopefully I have the right number of zeros here. Yep, one transpose. And, and in fact, that's really all you need to do because step three here is the statement that your row space of your matrix A is simply the span of these three vectors, row one, row two, and row three. And this is a basis. Okay, And that's actually what the last theorem says, that if you put it into the echelon form, then you're getting actually a basis. And you're getting something else for free, because remember we, we learned about dimension, and the dimension is the size of any basis. And how, in this case here, the dimension is three. But the thing that you should see, that this is equal to the number of leading entries or maybe pivots in your matrix A. So this kind of tells us how this procedure here tells us to find both the basis and the dimension of a row space in the matrix. So given any matrix now, we, can, we have three spaces attached to it. And for all three of those spaces, we can find both its basis and its dimension. So what we're gonna do uh, in, this is actually the end of this little short section for today's lecture. Next, we're gonna look at uh, the, what is the rank of a matrix, which uh, is referred to in the title.